I've been talking about the money machine here on Bloomberg Technology, the money in for infrastructure and not knowing how much money is coming out in terms of top line growth. Is that how you would approach earnings? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's unique and you have to look at each company differently. And the setup going into this week is one where I think there has to be a hyper focus on the unique business model of each. So when we talk specifically about Microsoft, the thing that we know is that capacity is below demand. So to your point, the spending is going to be high. We expect that both in land, GPUs, but on the same token, we expect that bookings are going to be relatively strong again this past quarter. And so we look to names like Microsoft for continued efficiency where they can offset some of that cost spend um, through other parts of the business. The other thing that I would mention, you know, our King's Point team is thinks that there's actually going to be this transition over where the forgotten subsector of software is going to be more part of the conversation again going forward. So we expect that both from Microsoft and we actually really think that about Salesforce as well. Let's focus in on Microsoft. I think language is really important. Last quarter, yeah. Microsoft told us, Nicole, that they had overall more than 30% top line growth for the cloud unit. And they said 7% of that was a contribution from AI. Do you think that a number like that is enough for investors to say, OK, I believe the story. For all the investment you've made, you are out actually making money from this AI thing? You know, this is where we are in a pivotal moment in a valuation. Um, and so when you think about where exactly AI is going to take us five years from now, nobody knows the answer on that. What you're listening for is when can I expect any glimmer of return on the invested capital that's going to work today? And so you've seen that play out in the last few weeks where you really did have to right size your positions as valuations looked a bit stretched if that is going to be a moving target. And so we are very much of the choppy in the short term, great returns in a longer period of time as you see that navigation, both of right sizing positions year to date from that really fast price movement, and then also this expected drop down in earnings in the next couple of quarters. There's a line in one of our Bloomberg terminal stories today about how Microsoft is like one of the most widely held stocks in the world amongst retail investors and institutional investors. What kind of a dynamic is that when you talk to clients? Like, it seems that Microsoft's always been there and you want to have a piece of it. Yeah, Microsoft became the utility of enterprise business. And so when you think about the structure of both business and personal life today, Microsoft is at the center of that. What Microsoft has built out for the consumer uh, is a unique story. And so you can both look to them for having the free cash flow, the money to the money to build the future of infrastructure while also providing those subscription level services um, that are so necessary for day-to-day -day operations. Um, and so from that perspective, it's, it's really hard to break up with a position like Microsoft in a portfolio. Nicole, I wanted to ask what this week's going to be like for you. You know, if you're a technology investor, you have just this incredible calendar of the world's biggest technology names reporting and then a Fed meeting slap bang in the middle of it. How do you <laughs> operate like that in that environment? Yeah, you know, I think starting on Friday, what we started to see was the narrowing in the di divergence between NASDAQ and small cap. And so that gave us a better footing going into this week. When we think about the Fed, uh, we really see that as creating this backdrop where we believe there can be wider participation. So we want diversified portfolios to have their moment in the sun again. I think seeing too much return from too few names creates an investor sentiment that is systemically going to lead them in the wrong direction. At the same time, though, you've seen some of these names like Meta, where we've chosen to deploy more cash because you see where they're trading. And from a relative valuation perspective, at 22 times, you have kind of a, a tiny risk there. And so you can play both sides of this leading into earnings um, when you have moments of volatility like we've had.